everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series 90 Voyager Class Galvatron. Let's start off by taking a look at the packaging and then we'll get into the review. So of course up front we have Transformers on the side, a really cool artwork shot of Galvatron in his robot mode. We have Studio Series, Galvatron with the Decepticon symbol, and 90, an open window displaying the figure in the packaging. We do have the Transformers Age of Extinction logo. Turning to the side there is a 90, a really cool artwork shot of Galvatron, those really menacing bright yellow eyes. We have Studio Series, where there is Voyager Class in several different different languages. On the back, he transforms in 32 steps. There's a product shot of him in his robot and truck mode. There's also an included uh, backdrop. And also, this is actually an officially licensed product of the Freightliner, which is pretty cool. And on the final side, there is another really cool running artwork pose of Galvatron with an Autobot symbol and the Authentics uh, Transformers logo at the bottom. And that is pretty much it for the packaging. So let's now get into the review. Here we have Galvatron in his truck mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very front. Really nice metallic blue for all those lights at the top with some glossy black for the entire window or windscreen section, with some more silver, glossy black, and gray for the entire grill section at the bottom, with some silver for the headlights and some more of that metallic blue. That actually looks super good in my opinion. Turning to the side, some more of that silver and gray, and I do like all the little details. There's actually some nut and bolt. There's a, a little window there and a mirror and the door and the door handle. Overall looking very nice. Uh, as for the wheels, the entire uh, trailer hitch section, these back four are actually pinned wheels, which is really nice to see. And the front ones are mushroom pegs. So this figure does roll very well across the surface. Um, not a big fan of all these panels and the panel lines and hinges. There's this huge, ugly hinge here. Not a big fan of that. And as you can see, and unfortunately, this entire top section really just does not want to stay tabbed in. So not a big fan of that. And not a big fan about this huge back section here. So there's the feet actually just sticking straight out. These are the feet just fold it up and um i do have to say this whole open gap here can be filled in by an accessory so i do like that but there's more hollowness here i do like the mechanical detailing though that actually looks super cool back there so a few problems here and there and i do have some more in the robot mode that i'll get to but now for some comparisons here he is with another baddie from the michael bay film here he is with the fallen so hopefully i can fit them all in view because the fallen is quite massive there we go and I have to say, between the two, they did so much better on the Fallen. I have to admit, just saying it now, before I even get into the world mode, I actually did used to have um, the original Age of Extinction Galvatron, and I sold it off because it was pretty much a shell former. The entire backpack pretty much became the truck, and I was not a fan of that. I did like the accessory, though. The accessory of the huge cannon was much better than the one that is included with this figure. Um... I sold it off, you know, and I saw this one for a really good deal at Target. It was like $15, and I was hoping it would be an improvement. I don't think so. I think it's either as bad as the original or maybe even worse. That is just my opinion, but definitely between the two, this one is a much better figure. But moving on to another comparison, I don't have that many Stu Series figures, so apologies about the lack of comparisons, but here he is with another truck. Uh, this is the 86 uh, Stu Series Ironhide, and just size-wise, they're pretty close in size, lengthwise, as you can see. And that is pretty much it for comparisons. I will have some more whenever he is in his robot mode. So now for accessories, he does come with this really cool missile pod piece, which I actually do quite like. I think this is probably my preferred between the two. So this was actually used in the movie and you can store this in two different ways. So there's a tab here and there is a slot right there. So they can just tab right into place just like that. And I kind of would have liked if the cigar came with two. That is just my opinion. But that overall looks very cool. And if you want, you can store it on the other side. Um, really just up to your own personal preference. And there is a second way you can store this. If you do turn to the bottom of the truck and open up this entire section here. So how this was tabbed into places, there is two tabs and two slots like that. And... There is a tab on the inside right there, and then there is a slot right there, and that will just tab right into place just like that. And then, of course, you can just close all this up how it was before, just closing that up, and there is the storage for that. As for his next accessory, not a big fan of this one. So this is supposed to be his huge cannon that he used in the movie. And I have to say, the original one from the Age of Extinction Galvatron was a lot better. That one actually had a missile that could fire. There's a little button and it would shoot out a missile. And it was so much bigger. There was a ton of really cool details. I have to admit, I do like all the mechanical and circuitry detailing on this. This looks super cool, but it just kind of wants me, makes me want a bigger accessory even more because it's so well detailed. It. Um, so not a big fan of this. Again, detail-wise, I'm pre pretty impressed just it's so tiny I don't know why they went for this some um, style I really don't understand of course I'll show you how you can implement it into his arm whenever he's in his robot mode but as for storage for the truck mode um 
I have to say it's actually pretty cool. So you use this huge slot back there and then you use this tab right here and that's just gonna tab right into place just like that. And then you just hinge this entire section down and there is the storage and it kind of just fills this entire gap in, which I have to say is really good. I actually really do like where accessories are used for uh, several purposes, you know, to store the accessory and maybe to fill in a gap. And I think that looks pretty cool. It does fill in a gap, but I wish maybe they could have had the detailed side facing up up and not down because this isn't the greatest look. It's a huge, you know, peg sticking out and open gaps in there. So not a big fan of that, but that is pretty much it for accessory storage and accessories and some comparisons. So let's now get down to transformation into his robot mode. Now for transformation, what you're going to want to do is go to the very bottom of the truck, open up this entire panel here just like that. There's two tabs and two slots, just bring that out. Then what you can do is flip the wheel out as well, do the same thing on their side. You can do the same thing with this panel, just collapse it up just like that. You can actually split the entire truck bed in half and you can rotate this entire assembly down like that. So just bring this down like that, and then you can flip this in, flip this in, and then you can fold the wheel in, fold that in, flip the foot up, and then both halves will actually tab together, so there's a tab and a slot, and that will actually form the foots just like that. So do the same thing on the other side, so just tab that in, and there we have the feet all done. And then you can actually get this entire panel here, and this is going to rotate down, and then in like that. Do the same thing on the other side. So just bring this panel down on this little slider joint, rotate this back, and then these panels will just fold back just like that. And there we go. And then you can fold these wheels in like that, and there we have the legs all done. Let me just raise the camera up just a tad bit so you can see what I'm doing. And now what you're gonna wanna do is bring the arms out just like that and then you can actually tab the waist in so there's a tab right there and a slot right there so that's just going to tab into place you do have to have a very good grip of it it's a really really strong tab and connection there we go got that and then you can use the bicep rotation to rotate the arm forward like that there we go same thing for the other side so just rotate the arm forward and then we can actually flip this entire assembly open, Let's just bring the head out, and then you're going to bring this section down. You can flip these panels back, and then this section here will actually flip up like that. And then you're going to get this section here, fold that back again like that. Then you can rotate the head around, and then of course this panel will just close up like that. And there we have Galvatron in his robot mode. Overall looking pretty cool. So let's take a look at the details. Here we have Galvatron in his robot mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very top with that head sculpt. Really well detailed in my opinion. I love the red for the eyes. Love the metallic blue. All the little details, the silver for this entire horn and kind of crest section. I think they did a really good job with that. As with the chest, love this entire circular section here done in some silver and orange, looking very cool. Love all the wiring and me mechanical detailing around this entire section. As for the shoulder and form, love the silver and more of that uh, really dark gray. I do like the armor pieces on the forms, these entire sections here, that looks pretty cool. As for the crotch and legs, mostly done that silver and that dark gray plastic, but really well sculpted. You can see all these mechanical detailing here, some wires, looks like maybe these are bullets or canisters here. Uh, and the feet are kind of boring, really just done in gray, but overall pretty cool in my opinion. I don't really like these panels kind of sticking out, it would have been nice if these could have folded in a little bit better because they do kind of jit out sort of of the legs, so not a big fan of that. But Turning to the back, um, not much kibble or hollowness, but I do have a problem with the color. So, you know, at the front, there's a lot of silver, really cool details, but back here, pretty much the entire back of the figure is just that gray color. No, of course, typically the back of the figure really doesn't matter, but it is kind of boring and bland. It would have been nice maybe if they put some more paint ups back here because back of the arms, the back itself, the back of the legs, overall just kind of boring. I do like how there's kind of a faux chest piece back here, so it kind of looks like that whole circular section in his actual chest kind of goes through the entire figure. I think that's pretty clever. But um, 
Uh, I do have a few more problems. So, um, in the film, it's been, you know, it's been a little while since I've seen Age of Extinction, but in the film, the majority of his design, his character was mostly just silver. You know, there was a bit of orange and metallic blue and stuff like that, but there was never really like gray like we're seeing here. So I'm not really sure why this is like unfinished. The chest was pretty much completely silver and, you know, a little bit of blue and orange. That was pretty much it. I never distinctly remember any of that dark gray color being here. Maybe there was a bit here and there, but there wasn't this much. So in my eyes, this looks a bit unfinished. This kind of reminds me of Legacy Evolution, um, Metal Hawk with his weapons being just that solid gray color. This seems kind of unfinished, like they forgot to paint it, especially where the chest and the forms are. I really don't like that. I know they didn't want to have it completely silver because it would be glowing like no tomorrow. You know, if it's just silver, it would be kind of repetitive and boring. They could have had a few bits of gray here and there, like the legs. I think that looks fine, but especially where the chest and the forearms are, it looks unfinished. It looks like they forgot to paint it. That is just my opinion. As to do have a problem with the proportion. The arms are super long and lengthy and skinny, but the legs are super chunky and big, you know, um, and the chest, although very well detailed, it's too small. It's too small in proportion to the arms and legs. It looks tiny. I do think the proportion and the details of his head is absolutely amazing. So I do have a few problems here and there. But again, sculpt work wise, they did a really good job. I've also heard several people complain about the chest, how it's very flat. If you do look at it from a side profile, it's very flat. It's very skinny and scrawny. And I do agree with that. But honestly, I'd say probably my biggest complaint is the proportions and especially the paint apps because I really don't know why there is so much that dark gray. I really don't, I really don't like it. It looks unfinished. Um, but now for some comparisons, I'm actually gonna have to zoom out quite a bit because the figure I'm going to compare him to is very big, but here he is with another villain of the Bay films. Here he is with the fallen. I will have to probably zoom out even more or move up the camera. There we go. There we go. So here we have them together and they overall look very, very cool next to each other. I still have to say again, they did a much better job with the Fallen. Just details, articulation, just a lot of things. They just did a lot better. And yes, the Fallen's alt mode is a bit kind of a jumbled mess, but still just overall a much better figure. That is just my opinion. Hopefully we do get another version of Galvatron soon, maybe in a separate line, maybe not Stu Series, because I really bought this for a better version of Galvatron. As I mentioned before, I had the original Age of Extinction one, and that one was okay at the time, but of course my expectations so we're quite a bit higher now considering, you know, Legacy Evolution, Legacy, and Stu Series have been, you know, overall pretty good. But I'd say kind of a disappointment. I really don't think he's improved. I would say probably the scope work has improved, but, um, of the proportions and some of the design choices that they've done, I really don't um, agree with several things they've done. Um, and accessories definitely have not improved. I'll get into those in just a second. But overall, they do look very cool next to each other. Hopefully, we'll get a lockdown. I know they have made a Stu Series one. I have not gotten it, but I've seen reviews. I'm not impressed with that. <laughs> which, of course, lockdown is definitely my favorite Bay uh, verse villain, which might shock people because everyone loves Megatron. Megatron is pretty cool, but lockdown is definitely my favorite Bay verse villain. So, hopefully we'll maybe get like a masterpiece version. I would totally buy that in an instance, but they do look quite cool next to each other. And now for another comparison, not one really related to his uh, movie, but here he is with uh, the 86 Ironhide, a Voyager class figure. As you can see, pretty decently sized. I mean, they're both Voyager figures, so Galvatron is uh, pretty big for a Voyager. And that is pretty much it for comparisons. So now for articulation, uh, the head can look up and down, side to side, the arm can move out and in, forward, back, there is a bicep rotation, there is a double jointed elbow bend, so there is no wrist rotation, full waist rotation, it does kind of knock into the backpack, but you can sort of go around it. As for, of course, the legs, they can kick that far forward, back, out to the side, unfortunately, unfortunately, slightly blocked due to that panel there. And of course, there is a knee bend to a pretty good degree. And there is a slight rotation and an ankle pivot, which I do have to say about this. It is a bit unfortunate with this section because the ankle pivot is pretty good. It, do, it goes to a pretty good angle, but it does slightly block, block in or kind of knock into this uh, kibble section here. So a bit unfortunate there, but still pretty good rotation there. Overall, I would say pretty standard for a Voyager class figure. I just have to say probably um, there's some kibble that does slightly get in the way of things. So would have been nice if there was some panels that were slightly um, better, you know, 
know, tabbed in or connected or moved in different areas. But overall, pretty standard for a Voyager figure. But now for accessories, I did briefly cover them in his truck mode. He does come with that really cool missile pod piece, which again, I have to say is better than the main weapon. So this can actually store on his forearm. There is a tab and slot that can just plug into place just like that. And I think that looks pretty cool. And in my opinion, um, I officially, I don't think it is a plastic piece compatible. Maybe you could try and make it work, but I think that looks pretty cool. I really would have liked to, so you could put them on uh, both arms and of course, both sides of the truck. I think that would have looked really, really nice. But as for his next accessory, I'm just going to put that off to the side because unfortunately the connection for the missile pod is slightly loose. So I don't want that popping off uh, during the review, but there is a peg here and a port in the hand and that just plugs right into place just like that. And definitely not a fan of this. So I know what they were going for. It was supposed to resemble like it forming out of his arm, which I think is a pretty cool concept. I think it looked really cool in the film. Um, but it just doesn't work. And especially because I used to have the original one. If I never had the original one, this would be pretty cool. But the original, original one actually was really cool. It was super cool, um, super big. It was a really big weapon. And it would actually tab sort of into the hand, but it would actually kind of connect into the, uh, rest of the arm as well. So it actually looked like it was a huge weapon forming out of the entire arm. This just kind of looks like he's holding a little pistol with his hand. It just doesn't look that good. Also, really the colors don't look good as well because there's this gray here and uh, of course the silver so it just looks a bit off it doesn't look like um how it should uh, it's, it's hard to put in the words but um i know what they were going for i just i think the original version did it a lot better i do have to say the paint apps of the weapon uh, as i mentioned before are really good really cool mechanical detailing love the silver all that stuff really well but i think it should be bigger I, i've heard a lot of people complain about that too i think it should be bigger they probably should have um they could have definitely kept the same connection like there's a peg and it of course tabs into the port and the hands but it would have been nice if it was bigger like if it could have like wrapped around the forearm more because then it would have um given you the illusion it actually is forming out of his arm but um as it is just it's, it's not that good but there is his cannon attached to his arm and that is pretty much it for accessories and comparisons and the robot mode so let's now get down to the final thought now for the final thoughts for the Transformers 2 Series 90 Voyager Class Galvatron. I think overall this figure is just okay. I do apologize this review is not as happy and positive as it usually is. Usually I'm very impressed and happy with these figures, but this one, not so much. So I bought this mostly because it was on sale at Target. I think it was like 15 bucks, and uh, an average Voyager price these days is about $35. So I was like, what the heck, I'll try it. Because I did used to have the original Age of Extinction Galvatron, and that one was just okay. I sold it off. It's been a while since I I've had it. Um, and uh, I didn't really like it because it was mostly a shelf former. Pretty much the entire backpack of the figure became the truck. The only thing that was like different was the legs. The legs became the truck bed. So there wasn't much of a transformation. There wasn't much engineering. So I wasn't that impressed in that aspect. The accessories were better with that figure 100%. The cannon uh, attaching to the form was super cool. It actually gave you the illusion it formed out of his uh, arm. But my biggest complaint with that weapon was um, two things. The missile would always fire even if you didn't touch it. it was so finicky with that and also the connection with the peg and the hand was very loose the weapon would pop off all the time so buying this figure i was hoping they would approve um improve upon the past figure and i have to say um it might be the same or worse. That is just my opinion. So I do like the head sculpt. Really well detailed. I love the entire crest section, the silver, the metallic blue, the red. It looks super menacing. Very accurate to Age of Extinction. I really do like that. I do like the missile pod accessory. I think that's probably the better accessory of the two. Um, uh, lots of really cool missiles. It would have been nice if they actually gotten two of those so you could plug them on both sides of the truck or both arms. I think that would have been really nice. I do like the chest, the huge circular section. Not sure if they ever um, had a name for that section in the movie, but um, it actually looks super cool. Love lots of circuitry detailing, and I really do like how there's actually a faux chest piece on the back, so it looks like the circle goes all the way through the figure. It's back here. I actually really do like that detail. They really didn't have to do that, but they did, and I really do like that. Um, 
I'm not a big fan of Old Grey, so this kind of reminds me of Metal Hawk, which I recently reviewed um, from Legacy Evolution. It seems unfinished, because in the film, pretty much all of him was silver. There was some orange and some metallic blue here and there, but there was never really gray. I'm kind of fine with a little bit of gray on the legs. That doesn't bother me that much, but I think main areas where I'm bothered is especially the chest, because the chest was pretty much completely silver. I mean, they literally have a box art design of the character character, you know, a whole like design and artwork of the character on the box. And you don't see any of this gray that we're seeing on the toy. Of course, no, they're not going to be a hundred percent accurate to the CGI design from the movie or the artwork. That's understandable. But I think for the amount of gray it is, I just don't like it, especially the feet, the chest and the arms, just not a fan. Um, again, yes, there probably could have been, but could have been a few gray paint apps here and there on, uh, the figure or on the character in the movie, but I know not this much. I also really don't like the proportions. So the arms are super lengthy and long, but the chest is tiny and the legs are super, you know, chunky and big and huge. I really don't understand it. I think the proportion of the head, I think it works. I think it's fine. I've also heard people complain about the chest and how it's very flat. It's not very angled. I can 100% agree with that. Um, um, but I, I do like all the circuitry. There's lots of wires and mechanical detailing. It looks very cool. Just there's several things they need to work on. As for course transformation, I really don't have any problems. It's a bit finicky here and there. Um, it's not that hard. Um, I'd say you probably need the instructions once or twice and then you got it down. As for the truck mode, I actually really do like probably, I would say the front profile and the side profile. The back, not the greatest. So, um, I really do like all the metallic blue for the lights, the glossy black, the gray all really do like that. The front of the truck looks really well detailed. And the side, there's a lot of really cool details. Like there's the door, the door handle, the mirror, all really like that. And the wheels, there's actually a four pinned wheels, which we don't really get those that much. So it rolls pretty well across the ground. The front two are mushroom peg, but you can barely even tell. So it really doesn't bother me. Um, but um, accessory storage, I actually really do like. So the missile pod can store in two different places. You can actually store on the underside of the truck or if you want to, which I didn't really feel like I needed to show this because I don't really know why we do this, but the same area where you store the missile pod in the truck mode is actually the chest in this mode. So if you wanted to, if you have no place to put the missile pod, like if you don't like it, you can actually store in the chest in this mode. Again, I didn't show it because I didn't really think many people were going to do that, but it's a nice feature. I really do like it. But again, I have to go back to, I think it would have been nice if you had gotten two of these because we could have put them on both sides of the truck. As for the cannon, actually stores in the back where the trailer hitches. Not a big fan of that because the feet just kind of stick straight out and there's a lot of empty gaps and wholeness. Yes, this um, accessory does fill in some gaps, but they actually have all the details and knife sculpt work um, facing the bottom of the truck, not the top. It would have been better if all those details were more visible because since it's facing up, there's a huge ugly peg just sticking out. So they did have a purpose. I do like it when accessories have have a good purpose like filling in gaps or storing in a cool way there is a purpose for this but appearance wise it didn't really make it any better it filled in a gap but now you just have this huge peg sticking out um overall this is a so-so figure would i tell you to buy this a full price Probably not. Probably not. Of course, I'm not really that big of a Studio Series fan. I have a few figures, like I have the Fallen, I have 86 Ironhide, and I have this figure. Is this as good as another, like, Legacy Evolution figure? Probably not. Like, um, I know, of course, there's repaints. Like, um, there was Twin Cast recently. That is a repaint. Would I tell you to buy Twin Cast over this figure? Probably. That might shock people, because that one is just a direct repaint, slight remold of Blaster. But I have to say, that one's just a better figure, just a better mold in general. So I do hope maybe they can try and go back and try and do this figure again, because again, I bought this figure hoping that it would be an improvement over the last one. In some ways it is, in some ways it is. There's definitely better articulation, of course. It has improved in that, probably better details, better scope work, but the portions, some weird design choices that I just don't understand. So it's just my opinion. I do apologize about this review being kind of negative. I'm trying to put my own, own positive spin in it. I'm trying not to be such a downer with it. It's just not a good figure. That's just my opinion. Hopefully they do another one. Um, let me know your thoughts on this figure in the comment section down below. I will have a lot of more reviews coming soon. I actually have all of the Rise of the Beast figures coming. Uh, I don't have them just yet, but they will be uh, delivering to my house very soon. So, uh, you know, Cheetor, the core classes, uh, Battle Trap, um, 
uh, Bumblebee, all of them, those are going to be coming soon, so make sure you stay tuned for those reviews on, this, uh, on the channel very, very soon. And if you are wondering, because I'm approaching actually 800 subscribers, I really am thankful for all the support recently, and it means a lot. Uh, when I hit 800 subscribers, if you're wondering what the review will be, I'll actually be reviewing Battle Trap for the 800 subscriber special. So if you see like a community post saying, I got it, and you're wondering, okay, when's the review? Well, I'm going to wait until I get 800 subscribers. So it will post as soon as I get that 800 subscribers. And that video is actually going to be very special. I'm going to have shout outs. I don't want to spoil it all because there's going to be some other things that are going to be really cool in that video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed this review and I'll see you next time.